I couldn't get anything posted yesterday because I had an extremely busy day. Uh, Barry was coming home from a 10-day travel trip to from Texas, so I had to get everything in order for that. And um, I had to groom Maddie and Lizzie before they go home <coughs> today. It's been very stressful. I thought that I would walk everybody through my morning routine when you get a dog out of ER and have to bring them home and they're being switched from IV antibiotics and pain meds and all of that stuff over to oral, they just put the dog in your arms, shove a piece of paper at you. They don't explain what any of the medications are. They go over this one every eight hours, this one every 12 hours, that quick, <clears throat> and out the door you go and go back and watch some of my live feeds and some of my videos. It was a nightmare to try to track these people down on the second day when Kira went down again at home and refused to eat. It was a nightmare to even get them on the phone. Once they discharged the dog, they also discharged it to your local vet. My local vet was swamped. She didn't even have time to read the 10 pages of what they had done with Kira in the ER and I posted all of those on my Facebook page along with the entire itemized bill, total transparency and for educational purposes. And you guys know that I've always been about that since day one in this sport. I've always been about educating people. Look at my 1980s DVD sets. I do need to get the one on whelping litters back up. I just haven't had time. I am going to walk through my morning after I fed Maddie. <coughs> after I fed Maddie and Lizzie. Now we're going to come over here. All right, so this is where I keep. I broke down all the medication that I was sent home with into this book and I gave each medication a number. This is not unlike the way I do my puppies. Every puppy gets a number. One through five, one through six, one through seven, one through eight. So I was used to using this organizational, this organizational paperwork, if you will. On the second day when Kira went down again here at home, it took me hours to track down an ER nurse and I was very nice, but I asked her, can we go through every single medication on that paper you gave me, tell me what it's for, and in some cases, why are we using it? Now, I already knew why we were using it once I knew what it was for. And can we cut back on it at this point? That was also important because I'm sure the medication was making her feel nauseous and gross again, and then she wouldn't eat, and if she doesn't eat, then she dies. Then I took every medication, and with the matching number from the chart to the lid, one, two, three, th three has already been used up. She had all of it, so it's gone. I, I created an eight, which was my home probiotics. <clears throat> This is enticed, didn't need a number because it's right on it. That's for antibiotics. This is so I can take her temperature every morning. So I put that on her thermometer. There we go with all her different meds and their number. <clears throat> now from here, this is right on my table every day. Now here's seven. I slept in late, Barry got home late. I was up late with him just talking and catching up so instead of starting my day at 9 or 10 in the morning I just slept until noon because I did groom four adult springers yesterday and that always wipes me out I usually do too but I wanted to have the day off with Barry now at noon these are the meds she's getting see I don't need to write them out I just put seven four two and eight and that's off of this list it's exactly what I do with my litters of puppies so if I have one puppy that's smaller and doesn't want to suck, then I write that description in what it's doing. And that one puppy usually stays on the dam 24-7 and doesn't get cycled four hours on, four hours off, five hours on, five hours off, six hours on, six hours off. 
and by the time a litter hits two weeks old or even 10 days old, I let the puppies in the box sometimes determine when the switch is, because if they're sleeping, I let them sleep, but sometimes they sleep too long. So I still go by the clock. Four on, four off, five hours on, off, six hours on, off, and so on, until I get up to eight hours on, off, so I can freaking sleep. But every, every puppy has its little detailed thing of what it's done for the day. So now we're back over here. Barry's home. Um, I decided to write out what I'm going to do all day. I did this when I took her out to the shop yesterday. I also went out to the shop two hours before my first check-in dog turned on the air conditioner. So when we walked out there, it would already be the same temperature as this room. That's what I'm doing at noon. Save her proin, which she's always on, and that's just for old dog urine leakage. Males and females can be on that product, but once they start to go on it, they stay on it forever. So it's not like a, an antibiotic for UTIs. It's just something to stop that leakage. Now, how do you know when you need it? If a dog pees a lot, pee, 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 that's, that, that's probably a UTI, but if a dog is sound asleep, on the sofa or in a doggy bed and then they get up and during a deep sleep they have released their urine that's an indicator that you should talk to your vet about needing proin p-r-o-i-n and within 12 hours it stops that and then you'll never have the problem again and there's there's virtually no side effects and you give it in their food it's a chewable tablet but give it in their food this is Tramadol, that's for pain. That has to go in their food. I found that out verbally, not on the sheet they sent home. Number two, that's an antibiotic. That also needs to be given in food. I can't pronounce it. And number eight is the, the, the probiotic, which I'm giving her. Whenever, whenever you or your dog are on antibiotics, you should really beef up your probiotics. Because as I've said before, the antibiotics go in and kill bad enzymes and bad bacteria, but they also kill all the good stuff too. So then where, where are you for your intestinal tract to even heal and get better? You know, you're screwed. Before that was known, this is why every time women were put on antibiotics for a UTI, they would instantly get a vaginal infection with yeast right after because the antibiotic killed off all the natural fauna enzymes that would keep the yeast under control. We all have candida in our plumbing system. It's part of the balance, but candida is also very dangerous because if your immune system and the bacteria isn't there to keep it in check, if it goes systemic, and I have had that problem when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, it can be lethal. And that's a whole nother story, but you, you don't want chronic can candidiasis in your mouth or your vagina for women. At four o'clock, she's gonna get number one. Now that one's given with no food. That's why I put it there. And it's every 12 hours. I'm a little late on that one, but I'll shift it around. 8 p.m., number two, we go back to the every eight hour. One, four, that's her antibiotic. Then somewhere, somewhere after eight with foods, so somewhere in that same section, I'm gonna give her night feed, plus a number eight, which is again the probiotic. I'm gonna let that settle, and maybe two, three hours later, somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m., I'm going to do number four, which is the tramadol for pain, which be, can be given either way, with or without food. Her entice, which is to increase her appetite. I call this one 1X, one because that's what my local vet gave me. And again, that's either for soothing the stomach or to increase appetite. So, and that, that's the, and I figure I'll give that last, so while she's sleeping, these two, then she can wake up with just those two working her system and hopefully enticing her to eat breakfast, which so far hasn't worked. I'm telling you, this is a BYTCH. If you, when you come home from these, from these kinds of situations with all these medications, and if you, if you don't have some kind of system to keep it under control, 
it's going to get too confusing and you're going to be more stressed out than you already are this is a really good idea if you have a busy day you could go through for five days and set up these charts ahead of time so all you have to do is read them do read them do read them do i also take her temperature in the morning every single day today it's 101.5 which tells me that it's good now here's kira and there's barry in his morning robe i told him not to move kira i put her up there to take her temperature here's my little rolly cart last night before i went to bed i cooked up one big chicken thigh and one of her steaks put it in the refrigerator brought it out before I even started my morning routine so it could be room temperature. And I'm cutting up all this into, looks like three quarter inch cubes. That is what I'm gonna use. It's called professional handlers. We call it stuffing the dog. A lot of dogs when they're traveling or on the road or prior to a dog show, if they come to us a week before and I'm looking at them going, they are not in show weight. And that can hurt them when they're being judged. If they're three, four pounds too light and the judge puts their hands on the rib cage or even looks at the dog, that's not good. And a lot of dogs traveling sometimes just don't want to eat. So we stuff the dogs. I'm getting Bill Jack today. In my old handling days, I think Bill Jack was a really good food because it was already done, kept refrigerated, and you can make stuffed balls. I will videotape that later. They might be a little bit bigger than this. Stuffing dogs can be very dangerous if you don't do it right. This is one reason why I stopped and I wanted to videotape this situation. If you have an older dog that's over their emergency problem, they're at home and they're not going to eat, well then what do you do? Put them back in the vet? How are they going to get them to eat? So you're going to have, and if they won't eat anything out of your hand, you're going to have to stuff them. Kira has already put on almost five pounds since I started feeding her myself. I'm very, very happy with that. She started to get that gaunt when you're in a, uh, in a concentration camp and her head started to look like a skull instead of her full fleshed out skull. I, couldn't, I, I, I can't do it. I can't look at the dog that way. And then she stopped eating. So now she's starting to fill back in, thank God. And in a little dish are the medications. This is one of them. I believe this is the antibiotic. This is the pain pill, and that's her probiotic. So I get that already over here. She's not deathly ill, all right? This is the way she normally acts on, her, on Barry's lap. And she also knows she's about ready to get hand fed, which she really doesn't like. So she's kind of like really plastered down there. But that's, come on. So she really is a little bit more active than what she's pretending to be right now. So I take my little cube. Now we've all given our dogs pills. I usually do it with a half spoon of peanut butter. I stick the pill on and they readily eat it that way. I'm gonna do a close up shot of this right now. For right. people who don't know how to, how to correctly open a dog's mouth. You see this space, there's the canine. And between the canine and when these really sharp molars start, there's almost an inch in there. Right behind the canine is an empty space. So that's where I'm gonna put my thumb right behind the canine. There's no good way to show this on video. So you put your thumb under there. Now I'm gonna put that in the back of her throat and just push it down. Now, this is the most important part. Let them be loose and free. And here, see, did you see her swallow? Did you see her swallow? That's the most important part. And you don't want to push it so far down with your finger because right there, one tube goes into the upper stomach and one tube goes into the lungs. I think it's going to be a problem if you get any food into the tube that goes into the lungs. Let the dog manipulate the back of the throat for that stuffing ball or that piece of meat to go into the right tube. The dog knows how to do that without your help. Now I've got a piece of chicken behind the tooth, rest it open, just a little push. Now I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, come on, sometimes you can do this, 
there see now she swallowed so that by doing this that would encourage her to swallow it takes time but it's safe if you do it right just barely I probably could push that one down a tiny bit more because now she's holding it way on top of her mouth I don't have a microphone on so I hope you guys are getting this come on voila come on there we go now she's swallowed and I have all that yet to go Wait for her to swallow. And for all of you who own Springer bitches, you know that look. That a male Springer in its lifetime will never give you. Unless it's dominant and aggressive, and if it is, it's not going to live long. So, come on, get rid of your bitchy look. She swallowed. <clears throat> Here, this is going to take two hours at this rate. I'm going down to about there on my finger. And that's from the center of her mouth, not the back of her throat. <clears throat> and that one she swallowed. She's always been a slow eater, so eater. Uh, always. She's always the last one out of her. When I multi-dog, they all get fed in their crates. I'm gonna let her. This is the most belligerent she's been about this, and I'm sure it's because she's on Barry's lap. I walked out of the room and she was sound asleep on Barry's lap to go to the bathroom down the hallway. She would wake up and follow me down the hallway. There is still that. There she went. <clears throat> there, that one went. Since I was giving her Pedialyte, I ran out. I would stop in between this process and give her Pedialyte, but I was noticed just by putting the syringe here in the corner of her mouth that that she was choking and coughing on. <clears throat> Even giving it to her that way slowly. So I stopped doing that. And trust me, she's got so much spit in her mouth, it's just rolling off my hands. Plus feeding her this way, she starts to drool. So there is plenty, plenty, plenty of lubrication. She does not need to stop to get any Oh, there she swallowed. <clears throat> Come on. Oh, okay, there she goes. Liz is taking ribeye, of course, from Audi. A double pack for ten dollars. It's really the cheapest way to get steak. And like you have, like you haven't seen me do that before. <laughs> when I was breeding litters, Barry would come home and go, "Oh, what's for dinner, honey?" And he'd open up the door, uh, the door of the refrigerator. There'd be a huge, huge pallet of great big, huge chunks of beef. And he's going, oh, yum, we're going to get something with that tonight. Then I go to feed the dog before I feed us. I break open 
the package of meat, throw the beef chunks on top of the bitch that's either pregnant or has puppies onto her food, and then I pull out a TV dinner for him and I. <laughs> yeah. I did do that. There you go, but, 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 dog's eating better than me. Yep. Don't you want me to be mad? These dogs were in my bed for years before I met you, and they're going to be in my bed years after you leave. Haven't been able to test that second one yet. He hasn't left. <laughs> Damn it, I did it again. We, we have, we have a marital rule that I will not kick him out or divorce him until the day, you in, until the day I, I don't make him laugh at least once a day. <laughs> and hard as I try, that rule gets broken every day. Behind the canine, I will give everybody a close up of what I'm doing to open up her mouth before I stop, stop this video feed. Because I think it's so important for people to know how to give their dogs a pill. If a half a spoon of peanut butter, and you stick the pill in that, and you may have to shove the spoon into the side into that little hole in the side of their mouth the first time so that they get the drift that hey peanut butter is good, this tastes good. I've done it with cream cheese, I've done it with mayonnaise, doesn't matter. Oh, there's our um, Yesterday morning when I did this, I got to a point where she was clearly done. Like I couldn't even crank open her mouth. And she was giving me the bitchy, evil eye. And I believe I'm starting to get that from her now. Here's one of her medications that's given. I'm going to go, they all have this nice little pocket in here. So I'm going to put that syringe in there and stick that in that pocket with her head tilted up a little bit so it doesn't fall out. Then so I know she's getting the probiotic. There's the probiotic. So, right behind the canine, you can see the hole. See that black space? You can see it. So that's where I'm going to put my thumb. Now, here's her gum on the bottom. And my hand is resting between the gum and her lower teeth. So even if she does that, she doesn't hurt me. This thumb is in the roof of her mouth. Just like that. And of course you don't do it forever like I just did. So there's the empty space between. Thumb in, padding on the bottom, pill in the back, push down. And then you can go like this. If you don't watch them swallow it and you just walk them away, they will spit it back up. They will. They will, they will, they will. I don't know if this angle can get you to the back of her throat or not. All we can do is try. So then I'm just going to place the pillow in the back of her throat. And then with this finger, I would have done it a lot faster. And then I'm not holding her head. I'm just resting her muzzle. And you go like that. Ha ha ha! She's going, I ain't swallowing that baby. Well, that's an important pill. So I'm going to go back to a piece of steak. That she has to swallow. That pill was so small, she might have not even known it was in there. There. See? She swallowed. Right, boy, does she look better. Go back and look over some of the pictures from a couple days ago when she had that scully look like, oh, 
wow, the weight that she's put back on since I've done this, she looks like her old self again. Pretty, pretty Kira. And if you can see over top her body, her body weight's probably back to where it should be. Not that skinny, gaunt, ugh. Much better. Her eyes look better, her expression looks better. I did do the colloidal silver in her eyes. Try to do that as, as often as you can throughout the day. It's not gonna hurt her, but certainly before our feeding. I keep it hung up. This is not a needle. Can you guys see that? Put it up again. All right. It's a special little thing and it's not sharp like a needle, it's dull. So don't be freaking out. And again, <clears throat> take the eye, you open it, and it squirts in. Take the eye, and you open it, and it squirts it in. I usually let her blink her own way, and after that is when I take a tissue or a towel and get any crud that's out of her eyes. So, there we go, Kira on Saturday. She still won't look at her her, her dummy. I, you know, I tried tossing it and she just looked at me like, you've gotta be kidding, I'm not gonna get up and get that thing. Where two weeks ago, three weeks ago, she was jumping up in the air to get it out of my hands. So she looks way better. She's not better, better yet, but she's getting there. So she'll probably spend most of the day up here. All right, guys. Now we put anything you use with this colloidal silver never touches water. New joint, new vet plus, fish oil. I should probably put fish oil now on her to do list for giving her. She usually eats these by hand as treats, but now she, or I, I just throw them in with her food. But since she's not eating, she hasn't been eating. And the distilled aloe, which always goes in her food to keep the hard tartar off the teeth. I could probably start doing this again. I'll take a syringe and just gently put it in that pocket on the side of her gum. Maybe I can even squirt it in there. I just don't want her to choke. She also gets, by vet, she gets a D3. They did blood work and she was low on vitamin D, which doesn't surprise me because she used to do so many outdoor sports and she doesn't anymore. And then she gets that medical marijuana drops. So th those she still gets, but those, those are things that she's been on for years and years and years. And I didn't want to cloud and confuse the emergency room stuff with her daily supplements and medications. So there you go. That's You have Morning Futures with Maria on Fox News, and now you're getting Morning with Kira by Deb on Dog Tricks of the Trade. <laughs> Let's hope that I don't have to continually repeat this with Kira, but she is looking better, but she's still not right. Then she was born 2007. I haven't listed. I'm terrible at dates. I never remember my anniversary, I never remember birthdays, I never I never even celebrate my own. Unless there's a three week closing date. I, give me a closing date, 12 noon on a Wednesday, and I'll know the dates. Other than that, I don't remember anything. So, there you go. That's how to organize everything. That's my normal supplements, which she hasn't been getting. I don't see why it's so important right now for two weeks that she doesn't get these things, for goodness sakes. And of course, I'll post something about her tomorrow. And again, I thank Kira and I both thank you for all your support, all your prayers. Any of you who did give donations through the Facebook donation or the GoFundMe for her vet bills, her ER, ICU bills, that were over $8,000. So we all appreciate it. Kira appreciates it. Some people have written me, oh, I pray for you every day, but I just don't have money to donate. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Just your prayers and the little comments that you leave me under her daily posts mean so much to me. 
and I sit here and I read them to Kira. I do. I'm crazy that way. So Kira, Kira hears. I read them out loud to Kira. And so ends another segment of Deb's dog trick with tricks of the trade. And it's two o'clock, way too early for a glass of wine. I'm and I just really finished my coffee at noon, so I'm kind of in between. I'm gonna go get my cranberry juice and my water. That, by the way, the gorgeous head paint, gorgeous. She could have better level planes here, but that is a gorgeous headpiece. The most Springer perfect flu in the world. I will go over that in detail. You've seen me do it before. Perfect. Below the jawline. Thick and plushy. Square in shape. Look at that. Perfect. There's your jawline. Perfect. Oval eye. Pigment matching the coat color. Eyes matching the coat color. S flat, square back skull. You can see how flat it is. High arched eyebrow on the side. Makes, makes the stop look deep, but it's not. So when you actually look at the stop, it's very moderate, but this high arched eyebrow. That gives that expression of a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Springer face. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.